Okay, go ahead and laugh if you want, but I'm tired of sitting in front of my computer, um, scouring the internet, trying to figure out how to get something done. So, uh, this is essentially the method I came up with for um, checking squareness of your cross slide against your carriage. Uh, I know there's probably other methods. Um, well, I know there are other methods. But to check it when it is not on the lathe will give you more accurate results than checking it, say, against a parallel stuck in a chuck on the spindle or um, or a uh, piece of drill rod stuck out of the spindle because the simple fact is, well simple fact is anything you check against the spindle could also be the spindle so it's a little difficult to say oh well the, the carriage is out of alignment when really the spindle is out of alignment or vice versa um, make sure you guys can see so essentially this is a uh, linear rails out of uh, copying machine they're um, pretty true uh, pretty well finished um, you find all kinds of good parts in copying machines and scanners so what I did here is obviously I clamped one rail underneath my my uh, dovetails and then I clamped the other rail onto the bottom of my whatever you want to call that my 60 degree well it actually appears to be more like a 59 degree however that works out but um you know i just clamped the linear rail in there um and that's to get it down into it so it'll follow the follow the the alignment of the actual carriage instead of anything else so once that's done I take this square, place it up on here, and then I take my other square, and I'm using my surface plate so I know there's no inconsistencies in the plate. Sorry guys, I got this square backwards. So, this is kind of a pain in the butt, but once this square is in here, once this one, you know, I butt this one up against my my linear rail coming out of there or a drill rod or whatever you have that's long and straight and then I take this and I just move it over until it touches now I know it's touching because I can hold down the back side of this square and attempt to move it and it won't go either way and I check my 90 make sure it's at as close to 90 degrees as possible now I can move this square in here and get my 90 and now I can move it back and forth uh, it's hard to say but I can see the gap in there so I know that my I know that my two components on my or my carriage and my cross slide of the carriage are not square to each other so to square the spindle um, with the cross side per se then I would be moving the spindle out of alignment with the ways um, so if you want to remove a concave or convex facing and this is really important um, you know they just say oh well it'll cause a, a convex or concave facing and convex is better than concave or concave is better than convex but the simple fact is especially if you're using um, small you know like this it only takes up to a half an inch but if you have oh man where's it at okay so if you have a you know say you're using like a, a little tiny cutoff tool or even a bigger cutoff tool you know if you're cutting in there convex and it's based off of the cross slide cutting in 
then that whole time you're coming in you're actually pushing friction against the side of that tool regardless of how straight you align it with that you know to go you know you align it to go straight in and then you're moving it in an angle and I have a lot of issues um, parting and I think a lot of it has to do with that I mean I can see a gap in there and I'd say it's probably close to I don't want to guesstimate but I'd say it's better than six thousandths I can tell you that um, I'll get some feelers out and measure it later but I mean when you can see it you're gonna run into issues so um, I'm also gonna you know rotate this rod around and rotate that one around this one shouldn't much matter because I was holding that square pretty tight against there so if it did have any bend to it you know I pushed it in and that's just so I'm actually going off the inside of the dovetail as opposed to off the edge because this edge could be who knows so you know I'll rotate this one around and make sure there's no bend in this rod or anything and make sure I'm getting the same measurements but um, essentially that's one way to figure it out I'm sure there's easier ways uh, but I'm not finding them so and I do have because of the clamps I do have that elevated on some one two threes so uh, food for thought guys go ahead and let me know if you got something better and easier bye